brothers and sisters, welcome again to the program into the chambers of the king. I'm your host, Apostle Purity Muni, and today we are privileged to have yet again Apostle Troy Mira. Apostle Troy, welcome to the program. It's good to be here back again. And uh, today we are going to go uh, deeper and just uh, discuss about, uh, we've been discussing about what happens after uh, Christ comes into your life. And so today we are going to, uh, to discuss what does that really look like uh, where you have the image of Christ. I know Apostle Troy Mira has been being given revelation by God concerning this. And so we are just going to go to him and say, uh, Apostle, what revelations have God given you uh, from Galatians 2.20? It's really amazing. I mean, what the Lord's been really sharing with me about how much he wants himself revealed through his people. Mm -hmm. And so where I'd like to start on that is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And this may be a familiar verse to a lot of people, and yet uh, the Lord has showed me a new insight on it that maybe we've never looked at before. Mm -hmm. So Galatians 2.20, and what it says here is, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What I want to focus here on is what the Holy Spirit had highlighted to me, is the part right here where it says, and the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And so what I wanted to uh, delve into today as the mystery of that is by the faith of the Son of God. And what faith is, is faith is an image. Mm -hmm. And as it says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, mm -hmm. is faith is the substance of things hoped for mm -hmm. and the evidence of things that are not seen. Mm -hmm. And so as Christ comes into a believer's life, he comes as a seed, mm -hmm. okay? And that seed of his life is imprinted into us when we are born again. Mm -hmm. But then what has to happen is the seed has to mature. Mm -hmm. And the way that it matures is by faith. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do is you have to water the seed by continually repeating what the Word of God says about you and who you are in Christ. And so the revelation of it is the more that we meditate on who the Son of God is, the more that we begin to manifest the faith or the image of the Son of God himself. Mm -hmm. And so we find in uh, First, Pe First Peter, chapter 1, verse 23, it says this, being born again, not of a corruptible seed, mm -hmm. but of an incorruptible seed mm -hmm. by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Mm -hmm. And so it is the faith of the image of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So just as Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, but also it was the seed of the word that was given to her that, that gestated and became the son of God mm -hmm. and manifested the son of God into the earth. So is it that an image of an incorruptible seed is alive in us, but it is in seed form. So therefore we have to water that seed by meditation. And so uh, uh, before we go to uh, where the seed is, I want us to go a little bit back. Uh, yeah, that is the question. Where is the seed? Is the seed uh, in our spirit, in our soul, or in our body? That's excellent. And is what the seed is, is the seed is in, in our spirits. Mm -hmm. We find in the, in, uh, the book of Luke, mm -hmm. chapter 17, mm -hmm. Luke 17. And we're it's starting at verse 20. It says this, And when the Pharisees mm -hmm. had demanded of him, mm -hmm. speaking of Jesus, mm -hmm. when the kingdom of God should come, mm -hmm. he answered them and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation. Mm -hmm. Neither shall you say, Over here, or over there, mm -hmm. 
but behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. And so the kingdom is in, is in our spirit yes. as a frequency and as a seed mm -hmm. of an image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Jesus is talking about here. And as we were talking about in one of our last broadcasts about spirit, soul, and body, and how we must have our spirits begin to take a dominant role and kingship over the, over the soul and over the body, so are we saying the exact same thing, just coming at it from a different angle, is that the seed of Christ within you and the image of that seed being watered forms more and more of the nature and the image of Christ within a believer. And, and uh, I also think that uh, as we meditate on the word, because meditation we are using our mind, mm -hmm. it's also that uh, we are teaching our our soul uh, the new nature because mm -hmm. even if the seed is in our spirit, right. God will still need to use our soul to do the things that he wants to do. Exactly. I think that's where in Romans 12 too, it's saying be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it's like we are taking the seed, we are musing on it, and it's releasing a leveration uh, in our soul so that now we are able to walk not according to the old nature but the new nature. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the way that the soul, I think I spoke about this one time when we were, when we were doing another broadcast, mm -hmm. as I said, that the soul mm -hmm. is like a mirror, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. that was designed to reflect the glory of God, mm -hmm. but through the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. it begins to uh, reflect out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the personal history, mm -hmm. which then becomes the personal identity mm -hmm. of a person, so that the image that they're actually reflecting mm -hmm. is personhood or self mm -hmm. instead of the image of God by the word of God mm -hmm. being uh, continually watered in them mm -hmm. so that they don't become uh, the image of self-nature, they become the image of Christ's nature. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, talk a little bit about the, that uh, tree because most people just read that uh, Eve uh, ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. Uh, I know we have mentioned it, but I, I feel like uh, believers don't, have not taken time to really understand what actually happened because it's only when they understand what happened then that they will understand what you're talking about now, about yes. going back to the image of Christ. Right. Well, you see, everything around us as far as mm -hmm. the physical realm and everything mm -hmm. are facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it may be true that you have a sickness or disease in your body. Mm -hmm. That may be a fact, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But the image of Christ is that by his stripes, mm -hmm. you are healed mm -hmm. and you were healed, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so we take the truth mm -hmm. and we place the truth over our facts. Mm -hmm. So we meditate on the truth and it is by his truth that he shall make you free. It is not by the facts. Mm -hmm. yes. And so that's one of the key issues of faith mm -hmm. is truth, eternal truth, mm -hmm. is more powerful and, and is supposed to replace fact. Mm -hmm. And also uh, talk about that the, you said faith. Yeah, yes, so that's what Hebrew says. Faith is a substance. Mm -hmm. Or uh, in other words, faith is a person. Can you talk about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Faith is a substance, mm -hmm. or in a sense, it is a frequency, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It has an energy and a life to it. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is the more that we image it from our spirit into our souls, mm -hmm. and the more that it becomes the truth to us, the mm -hmm. more alive mm -hmm. it begins to be in us. Mm -hmm. And it begins to take out the unbelief, which is the things that we believe according to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and what we see. Mm -hmm. See, the Word of God tells us that the just live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're not supposed to be living by what we see. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be living by our truth mm -hmm. and what the Word of God says in any given situation. Mm -hmm. And that's to be the governing factor of mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we see that, I think, in, in Genesis when uh, before we used to get our knowledge or our logic directly from God. Right. But now we have another source. 
And uh, actually, sometimes if you read Hebrews 4.12, I think it becomes so uh, sometimes me good that you can't know whether it is coming from the outside or from God because it says the word of God is the only one which is able to bring that division, right. to be able to bring clarity whether something is coming from God or from the soul. Right. Mm -hmm. And what you have to do is that's part of the whole process mm -hmm. is that nothing of Christianity is instantaneous. Mm -hmm. It must be practiced mm -hmm. and it must be something where it becomes lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the things that I've been sharing with believers in our own meetings is that the Bible presupposes that throughout your entire Christian life, you've meditated on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Just like it says in Joshua 1.8, mm -hmm. that you shall meditate in it day and night. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible predisposes that it is believed that a believer has always meditated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for one sense, we're like, trying to catch up with where we've always supposed to be, have been, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. And so what the Word of God does is the Word of God becomes alive in you. The more that you meditate on it, mm -hmm. the more that it becomes quickened life in you, mm -hmm. and it becomes your truth. Mm -hmm. And so when a fact comes, mm -hmm. your truth uh, immediately, like what you were speaking about in Hebrews 4.12, mm -hmm. like a sword mm -hmm. that pierces and divides between soul and spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what we believe in our souls versus what the Word of God says, mm -hmm. which is going to win? Mm -hmm. Is it yes. going to be your soul or is it going to be your spirit mm -hmm. taking dominance by the Word of God mm -hmm. and replacing fact with truth? Yes, and, and I think that's where also you talked about we shall know the truth. I think most people confuse the truth and, and the facts mm -hmm. because the facts could be you go to the doctor, he diagnoses you, he tells you it is, uh, you have cancer. But the truth is by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Right. But it's, it depends on what have you been meditating on. Right. And uh, actually, we were talking about that earlier because sometimes when we know we have cancer, what do we do? We go on the internet, we research. By that time, we are feeding either faith or unbelief. Right. Because by the end of it, we know more about cancer than of Jesus' healing. Right. And uh, you mentioned that faith is a frequency. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, mm -hmm. I was um, meditating on that once, and the Holy Spirit said to me, mm -hmm. he said, your frequency mm -hmm is your frequently. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Your mm -hmm. frequency mm -hmm. is your frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what we actually do is what our spirits is designed to do is actually uh, conduct energy. Mm -hmm. Okay? And one of the words for the anointing in the Greek is the word energia, mm -hmm. from which we get the English word energy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so we actually conduct a frequency. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you get... Uh, mature in the Lord, you can actually see the frequency around a person. Mm -hmm. You can see doubt. You can see unbelief. You can see fear. You can see lust. You can see any frequency. Mm -hmm. But you can also see faith. Mm -hmm. You can see grace. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, purity. You mm -hmm. can see those things around a believer's life mm -hmm. because of what is they have been placing frequently mm -hmm in front of them, what is the image mm -hmm. that they're actually um, broadcasting for lack of a better way of, of putting it. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, even for the believers to understand more on that, I don't know whether this is the same, but there's one place where the Bible says that when Jesus came, the power of God was present to heal. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, we don't want to think about power. Because I feel like uh, with the coming of things like New Age and those things, exactly. there's some words that we don't want to talk about. But you about. see, that's an image of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And mm -hmm. we've judged the power of God. We've mm -hmm. judged what the Bible says mm -hmm. about signs and wonders and miracle and power mm -hmm. by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So mm -hmm. then we relegate it to the New Age mm -hmm. and give it over to the camp of the enemy, basically. Yeah, so mostly like now I know when you mentioned frequency, 
There's some people who are like, ooh, what yeah. is that? But uh, uh, the easiest way to understand is how did Jesus know that there was power there which was different than any other? There was, he said the power of God was present to heal, exactly. not, to, not to any other miracle, but to heal. Mm -hmm. So there must be something that he, was, he became aware of. There's right. some uh, awareness of what was present in the atmosphere, and he caused it power. Well, it's just like the woman of the, uh, uh, that went and touched the hem of Jesus' mm -hmm. garment, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Where she said in herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, mm -hmm. I shall be made whole. Mm -hmm. Well, then when she touched him, mm -hmm. Jesus said, who touched me? Mm -hmm. And the disciples commented on it because there was a whole lot of people that were touching him mm -hmm. at that moment. He was being thronged and just mm -hmm. patted on and everything else. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of an absurd thought through the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the natural, who touched you? There's about 20 hands on you right now. Mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But who touched me as far as, for I have perceived virtue, mm -hmm. energy, power. frequency, mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. has flown out of me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so he knew when someone had tapped into that energy of healing that came from his life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so how do you... Uh, how, how do we, uh, because we want to walk uh, in, like Jesus said, I don't think, he said, oh, it's only one person where he talked about greater faith. But he said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, what is that? What does faith as a mustard seed look like? Well, faith must be tangible, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what it's talking about when it says faith is a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. It's saying the smallest degree of faith. Mm -hmm but it actually has to be the substance of faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has to have substance. Mm -hmm. So, like we say, everything of the kingdom starts with seed form. Mm -hmm, yes. That's what I was speaking about as we began this, mm -hmm. okay? Is that everything that starts with seed form, therefore that faith must be a substance, even the tiniest, tiniest substance mm -hmm, yes. can move a mountain, can, it can kill a fig tree, can curse those things in your life that you need cursed, but can bless those things and multiply those things that you need blessed. Mm -hmm. But the key is, like uh, what you read in First Peter, uh, in the book of Peter, the, it is incorruptible seed. Mm -hmm. Because we see that the man who comes to Jesus and he has a son, and he says, I believe, but help my unbelief. Right. That means that his substance was corrupted. Exactly. On one side, he's believing the word, but he has facts in there. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying, separate. The moment you have pure uh, word, just standing, regardless of how small the word is, then you will see things move. Right. Because it's a seed. In our ministry, I've been speaking about, and uh, those that are in the audience could even attest to it, mm -hmm. I've just been speaking about unbelief and fasting mm -hmm. and how fasting breaks unbelief. Mm -hmm. And what it is is that there's a, there's a type of unbelief that all believers have mm -hmm. if they've never dealt with it, mm -hmm. and that is that they truly believe in the sight realm mm -hmm. and in the physical realm more than they believe the power of God in the image of faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's unbelief. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. But it must be identified with and isolated so that we can deal with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so when you go around, well, I don't have unbelief. Well, is the sick healed? And you, no, no, no. You have unbelief. Mm -hmm. So just like it was said to the disciples when they came to Jesus, said, why couldn't we cast out the demon out of the boy? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Mm -hmm. This was the unbelief that he was talking about. Mm -hmm. You actually believe sight more than you believe faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the just shall live by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Could I turn in another verse, verse of scripture? Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Yes, 4.18. Starting at verse 17 through 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works in us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Mm. While we look not, we look at things, not at things that are seen, but at things that are not seen. 
For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Mm -hmm. and so we don't look at the temporal realm of those things that are around us mm -hmm. and which we can see. Mm -hmm. We look at those things which are eternal. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that we, the first place that we find those eternal substances mm -hmm. is found in our Bibles. Yes. Okay. But it must become a living word. It must become a quickened word mm -hmm. in your spirit before it begins to be substance of faith that begins to work the kingdom and manifest the power of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. and, and so how do, uh, how do people move from that? I usually say I come from a country where for the first 12 years of our life, mm -hmm. we, study, uh, we study scripture. Mm -hmm. And so, but the scripture is knowledge because we are being tested on it. Right. But now, how do we get the scripture which is knowledge, which is in our head, to become the revelation that we need so that it can release life? Well, like I said, faith is your frequency or your frequently. Mm -hmm. So it's like this verse right here, verse 18, um, four or five times a week, mm -hmm. I meditate on it. Mm -hmm. I'll take it for 20 minutes and just roll it through my, sp through my spirit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which means I'll just sit there and mutter it, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. We look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. I didn't look at my Bible to do that mm -hmm. because it's in me, mm -hmm. and it's something that I'm continuing to quicken mm -hmm. in me so that it becomes more alive, more alive, more alive. Mm -hmm. So we don't look at things which are seen. So when I get a phone call from someone saying doctor says it's terminal, my, my baby, my child needs healed now, mm -hmm. or something like that. I just simply speak the word of God and say it's done and hang up the phone. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we look not at things which are seen, we look at things that are not seen, mm -hmm. and by his stripes, that baby is healed. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not until we get uh, the people looking not at the symptoms, but at the outward, what is outward, it's, it's until we get them looking at the word. And actually, uh, I see in John 1 where the Bible says Jesus is the word. Mm -hmm. So it is not, uh, we are saying faith is a substance, it's a frequency, but it's also a person. Exactly. It's the moment they are able to see uh, who Jesus is in that situation. Like if you look at the Old Testament, these covenant names of God, were revealed the moment, like, let's say Jehovah Nisi, Moses right. is up there, he's fighting, and that's when he comes into the revelation of that name of God. Jehovah provider, when he provides this lamb for sacrifice for exactly. Abraham. And so it is when we are able to come to that place where we see beyond the issue and be able to see him and what he is, because he's I am. Mm -hmm. We see I am, what is he being manifested as in that situation? Well, for those of you that have heard, uh, heard me before, if you'll remember in a prior broadcast, we talked about uh, that with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the eyes were opened. Mm -hmm. And I said that it was like snake eyes had opened, that they now uh, looked at their circumstances their symptoms and their situations, and I say it with almost a playful S like a snake, circumstances, symptoms, situations, because mm -hmm. the eyes of the snake were opened in man. Mm -hmm. So when we look at our circumstances or our symptoms mm -hmm. versus the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so it was given to the, uh, to the Israelites that fiery serpents had bitten them, mm -hmm. and it was given to them that a serpent was raised upon a pole, mm -hmm. and those that looked upon it and continued to fix their gaze mm -hmm. and fastened their eyes upon it mm -hmm. were healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that being a type of Christ, mm -hmm. when he said, if I be lifted up from the earth mm -hmm. as Moses lifted up the mm -hmm. snake mm -hmm. before the, the children of Israel, mm -hmm. I will draw all men unto me. Mm -hmm. And that is drawing to healing, that is draw, drawing to salvation, mm -hmm. that is draw, drawing to all levels of soundness that we find in Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I, I think the gazing upon, that's what we are calling meditation. Because people are going to wonder, how do I gaze upon? 
It is going to the word and just looking at it until you are able to see who he is for you in that situation. Who he is for you, like uh, in that, it's almost like the word jumps out of, like yes. you can be reading uh, the word, you can be reading the same scripture, but one day it's like uh, this illumination comes on the word and uh, you're like, is this the same scripture that I've been reading? And then it is going to, it's only then that it's going to bring life to your situation. Uh, Pastor, we have uh, uh, five minutes left, and I want you to speak to the people because I believe that some of them are in places where uh, it's even difficult for them to take scripture and meditate on it and be able, to, they're, they're wondering how long will it take before they come to this level of faith. Right. But the situations and the circumstances are there. So can you go ahead and pray with them? Sure. Well, first of all, what you must do is you must start now with this revelation and what's been released today. And so we're going to pray for you right now, but what you can do, begin to do. And Christ will take what little seed you offer and how much you can do, and he's going to multiply it into exceeding abundance and great joy. So just begin where you are, and let's pray right now. Father, right now, as I raise my hand before your people, Father, I speak words of life, and we ask right now, Lord, that in every situation, in every household, and in every family, Lord, that the word of God would be quickened and its power would be known for those believers. In every circumstance, in every situation, and in every symptom, Lord, let the truth of your word, let the truth of your nature, let the truth of your character begin to manifest, Lord, and bring forth great power and great glory and great freedom, that they may know the truth and the truth may make them free. So right now, Lord, by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, we release the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We release the faith to believe above their, their circumstances. And we thank you, Lord, for the power of your word and for the power of your kingdom as it is manifested and displayed in each believer's life. To your glory, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. And also, uh, we just uh, want to ask you who are viewing, if you have not uh, made Jesus, if you have not accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life, just invite him. Uh, because regardless of how much good works you do, I know we started with the knowledge of uh, good and evil. We started talking about faith, but you cannot have faith unless unless Jesus himself lives inside of you. Because yes. without that, regardless of how many good things you That's do. That's the first step. Uh, uh, how many good things you do, you, that cannot qualify you to be uh, good in the eyes of God who is complete holiness. The only way is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. You just have first, this first step, invite him to come into your life. And like I tell you all the time, if you've been worshiping and you are doubting if there's God or that's the real God, just ask, will the true God reveal himself to you? If you ask, if you ask and you don't doubt, he will reveal himself to you and you will know whether you have been worshiping the true God. And so uh, that's all we had for you today. Thank you, uh, Apostle Troy Mira, for being with us. And uh, we are going to continue next week um, talking about even going deeper in this topic. And so join us uh, next week. Uh, we are going to still have Apostle Troy Mira as our guest. And until next time, I have been your host, Apostle Purity Muni. May the blessings of God be upon you. Bye.